everybody, I am Joe Tobiasen, and as you can see, I'm not filming today the video from my normal video stuff. Instead, I'm going to do it on my MacBook Pro because I, probably like most of you, that's how I communicate with everybody else now. But also, if you've been like me and have been on more Zoom calls in the last week than you have in the previous decade, you realize that most of our friends have no idea how to have good photos and or good video and good audio on their Zoom calls. So I'm sure your videos are great. You look beautiful, your audio is perfect, but for all your friends who are out there who have no idea what they're doing, that's what we're here to do. We're gonna have, I have a couple tips on how to make your video and how to make your audio just a little bit better and a little bit more pleasant to be a part of. If you're starting with your videos, the thing that's most important to know is that the camera is trying to come up with an even exposure across the board. Now that doesn't necessarily mean it's going for an exposure on your face, it's going for an even exposure across the whole scene that it's looking at. So, of course, that anytime you have something that's going to have a high contrast area, that's going to lead to problems within how to expose things correctly, how to balance it out. So just be aware of that and know that that's what the camera is trying to balance. If it's daytime, this is a lot easier to manage. And let me show you a couple things in here. The easiest thing to do if it's daytime is just get close to a window and aim your body at it. So I'm close to this window here in my kitchen here. And as you can see right now, my light, the light on my face actually looks really, really good, doesn't it? It's pretty even. It's falling on my face because I'm far enough back that it's not going to hit any place in particular. But I'm going to get a little bit closer to the window, just like this. And you can see now it's getting like overblown on my face and really dark behind me. Now it kind of levels out and actually looks okay. Anytime I move, it kind of loses because the camera is constantly readjusting, but it's not very intelligent about that. So putting yourself in a space that's close to natural light, but not in natural light, is going to be really way, way, way better for making that light look consistent. We've all had our friend who's that person that comes in and like, hey guys, I'm on my juice. I'm on the Zoom chat already here. Aren't you glad? Can't you see me? Or even worse, can't you see me? I look great. So if you see that person, just tell them, hey, why don't you move away from that window or actually just like spin around so that you're facing towards the light and it's gonna look so much better. So the thing is, sometimes it's also at nighttime and then it gets really dark and that's obviously an issue because uh, things are hard to see. So here's two things you can do to help make the nighttime photos and video look way, way better when you're on Zoom calls. Obviously, this looks like crap. The reason it looks like crap is because the light's coming in from the side and just is really dark. Do you remember what I said before about how the camera automatically wants to even out a scene and make it be a balance? But sometimes the thing is that balance might be really dark. So in the scene I'm looking at right now, we're going from like dark to crazy dark. And so when that does, it averages it out to this really grainy garbage. And that's why you can't really see things. Also, I have a beard, it's got an extra dark area down here, so it's just compounding that problem. So, like what we said before when using the, the, the window and getting close to it, but not directly in that light, so you have kind of like a balanced amount of light hitting your face, that's what we can kind of do that to really help here. So instantly, you swing over here and I'm aimed so there's a light directly behind the screen. It makes an enormous difference on what you can see and how well that looks. When one thing that's especially important with that, like I said, with the beards, is finding ways to make those be as uh, well lit as possible because it's making an enormous difference. But secondly, look for catch lights in your eyes because that really always helps you look like you're alive and you're excited, you're emotional, you're happy to be on the call. So find a way to make that light be bright enough that it's on there. So right now I have a lampshade on here, but if I was to take that lampshade off that light, well, actually, let me do that really quick. So as you can see, obviously I took the lampshade off, so it's not as diffused and the light is much, much stronger and instantly the whole scene is way, way better. So obviously I have a better light, but because it's in there and I've lifted the camera up so that the lampshade is just barely below the light. So like if I lift this, you can see right here, the computer's starting to cast a shade onto there. So it's just below there. But what that does is that puts that catch light right in your eyes. It makes you look a lot better.
So as you can see, obviously I took the lampshade off, so it's not as diffused and the light is much, much stronger and instantly the whole scene is way, way better. So obviously I have a better light, but because it's in there and I've lifted the camera up so that the lampshade is just barely below the light. So like if I lift this, you can see right here, the computer's starting to cast a shade onto there. So it's just below there. But what that does is that puts that catch light right in your eyes. It makes you look a lot better. So there's one other thing you can do here if yeah. all the lighting is looking really, really bad is because in the end, this camera might just not be able to make it work. Like obviously I took the lampshade off and things look a lot better now, but it just might be impossible to make those actually look great. So the trick, last trick, is might be to use a different camera. With that, what I've done is I just installed the same like Zoom app or whatever that I'd be using, but I installed it on this um, phone here, and then I'm going to use that in order to see um, to use that as the camera and then i'll probably just like mute the screen here so that i would just be able to talk or take notes or whatever and see things from the computer but it's, this is the one i like to protect so i'm going to flip over here and screen record and we'll see what i mean all right so as you can see i'm now sharing i'm kind of like video chatting with myself and this is the same thing as if you used like if you received a like a zoom invitation you could just log in on both accounts you might need to make two accounts if you for some reason you need to but that's not necessary. You might be able to just like be a guest on one and be logged into the other. But this is actually using the front facing camera of my, my camera and it instantly, you can see how much better like a newer phone is versus the computer. They just put much better cameras in the phones. But the real trick here is there's two things. Number one, if you're gonna do this, make sure that you um, mute the audio export on the phone, and so you, you can see here, I'm gonna flip over and you'll see on the phone side, it says up here in the, the upper um, left corner here, that's speaker on, and then we're gonna turn that back off. You'll make sure that speaker's off just so you don't get the audio thing on there. And honestly, you probably actually wanna end up hiding your screen on the main screen, because that just gets really annoying because people are gonna see you twice. So right here you can see my name and then the other one. But the real trick here to making this look good is actually to flip it around and use that front facing camera, which, oh my gosh, how much better does that look already? There's a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of lag coming in there. Um, but that's not the end of the world, honestly. Like we can probably deal with that. Um, and especially if I turn over here back towards having that good light right in there, like I was saying, whoops, so there's the shadow just underneath there, right in there, it's looking good. Now it looks a little bit weird because I just have my my phone sitting here up against the monitor, so maybe you could position it differently or something like that to make it be more appealing. But just use that tool you already have to make it be in there. One thing is I'm actually looking right, make sure you look into the right camera. So if it's if it's in here, like talk to the camera that you're looking at. Don't look at the wrong one. Or if you for some reason want to like put it over here on the side and then your laptop's here so you're taking notes, make sure you, you talk into the camera that's actually recording on here. But oh my gosh, how much better does this quality look already, right? It's daytime again, and let's talk about audio. There, basically, there are only two tips when it comes to this one. The first thing is turn everything off. So that means if you have fans, if you have heaters, if you have dehumidifiers, if the heater in your house is really loud, any of those kind of things. If you, sometimes it's even if it's something like a, a external hard drive. If it makes a whirling sound, you're going to hear it. So just, just turn those things off before you start the call. And the second thing is just use headphones. It's such a simple step, but like your computer audio is not designed to pick stuff up like this. It's designed to be a very ambient and pick up a lot of different noises, but it's not very good at picking up specifically like human speech. Whereas like even the crappiest, uh, cheapest headphones that came with your phone is designed in a way that it's going to be picking up the, the tone of your voice way, way, way better. And that's going to hang off of here. So you're saying it in the air. As long as I'm not wearing like a windbreaker and this is brushing against it, or I have a really long beard and brushing it like that, which, sorry, that was probably a disgusting sound. But that's going to be a way cleaner sound than your own. Also, you don't hear any like heat or tapping, those kind of things. So, once again, I am sure that your Zoom calls are wonderful. Your sound is perfect, your video is great. But for any of your friends who are out there who have really terrible sound, I hope this video is helpful. Stay safe, stay home. <laughs>